I would like to take an aside for a moment yes. and mention former WCW head Eric Bischoff. Yes. Okay. Way, 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 way back in the day, I read Eric Bischoff's biography, which I believe was published by WWE because uh, times change quickly. But anyway. Yes. Um, Is he still he with WWE? Huh? Is he still with oh, WWE? No, 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 no. No, not at all. I don't know what he's doing now, but he's definitely not with the WWE anymore. The WWE has this thing now where Raw is its own separate brand and SmackDown is its own separate brand. And then they've got NXT, which is th- like the training ground for Raw and SmackDown. Yeah. And then they have WWE 205 or whatever it's called, which is just cruiserweights and young people. And so they have all of these different individual brands and they are desperate for people to fill these brands. So what they're doing is they're, 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 Literally bringing every old person back <laughs> is what they're doing. Uh, right. Hold on. Let me pause this for a second because I need to pee. So do I. Okay. So, All right, be back. So the WWE is desperate to hire people to fill all of these empty positions because basically they now own four different brands. Back in the day, it was just, we own the WWE. But now, technically, they own four different WWEs. Uh So they are so desperate. So one of the things that they have been doing is just hiring as many retro people as they can for a while. So it's weird to see these brand new wrestlers like Braum Strowman wrestling Goldust. (laughs) It's like, you wrestled... You wrestled Roddy Roddy Piper at a WrestleMania. How the fuck old are you? <laughs> the Dudleys were there for a while. The Hardy Boys are there for now. Yeah. And that's how things are with WWE right now. So is Eric Bischoff there now? No. Will he be soon? I don't know. Probably. They're desperate. See, I, 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 I first off, when they, when they opened up SmackDown, they were trying to do that with SmackDown to begin with, where it would be kind of separate from Raw, you know. Yeah. And it looked it it looked like SmackDown was the farm team, you know. Yeah, you had your lower card wrestlers and things like that, and then they would get kicked over to Raw. And I I always thought that it would that it would be like okay Vince McMahon. You concentrate on Raw and give Eric Bischoff SmackDown, and then you could still continue a, a version of the Monday Night Wars. Yeah, it's ridiculous that Raw is still three hours long. No show needs three fucking hours. Yeah. It is ridiculous that that is still three hours long. The only reason that Raw was three hours long was to fight in the Monday Night Wars, which in no way exists because you basically have a monopoly, Vince McMahon. Yeah. You do not need this three hours. That is a pain to watch. If you are a WWE fan, you need to watch three hours of Raw and then two hours of SmackDown and, I don't know, an hour of WWE 205 and an hour of NXT. That's what, like seven or eight hours right there a week that you have to devote to one company. That's not that's not wrestling. That's homework. That's an yeah. assignment. Yeah. <laughs> Wrestling's a fucking pain right now. So anyway, Eric Bischoff wrote his biography, and he was talking about how a bunch of WCW wrestlers were uh, honored to go and perform a wrestling show in North Korea. And it was a big deal, and him and Hulk Hogan and all of the big people made their way to North Korea. And it was such a big deal, but apparently... Uh, Eric Bischoff didn't know all of the rules. And so fuck Eric Bischoff, if you can imagine this, and I can totally picture this in the world of this documentary. Eric Bischoff, being Eric Bischoff, wakes up at 5 a.m. 
to go jogging. <laughs> okay. Basically, Eric Bischoff almost killed. Because mm-hmm. the one thing you can't do... No, imagine and imagine the guy who stars in this documentary just deciding, you know what, I'm going to wake up super early, escape from all of my handlers, and walk around the neighborhood. <laughs> Is basically what Eric Bischoff did. And he, he like, jogs two times like uh, around the neighborhood and then when he comes back basically all of the korean police is waiting for him <laughs> like dude you're in north korea you can't just escape and go <laughs> for a fucking jog you almost died <laughs> like what the hell eric bischoff <laughs> 